Howdy friends! I've been getting a lot of messages uh, last fall and then this spring and it's March of 2023. You're not supposed to date your videos but I don't care. It's becoming time to start piddling with your arrows and your bow and get them ready because the season will be early upon us. And I want to talk about the difference between shooting a bear shaft with your bow and using a ram tester to test them or to find the stiffness of the arrow and make all the stiffness match which is what a ram tester does and that's, at least that's the goal i encourage you to go watch videos on youtube about ram testing or using a spine indexing tool which is basically looks like this and you put the shaft like that and it has a meter in the middle and you bend the arrow like that with a weight okay I encourage you to go watch some of those videos because this will make more sense as opposed to shooting a bear shaft with your own bow and not being lazy. Stay tuned. indexing etc videos is really kind of a they want to cheat code or hack they say that bear shaft tuning is is too hard and some of the people with the ram testing videos and the testing tools and all that are pretty high level archers some of the people are you know world-class recurve people and pros and all that stuff and they know a lot more about the bow than I do that's what been one of my big flaws is I'm not a bow twister and I'm a dumbass because I don't know about that stuff. <laughs> okay. When you use a ram tester or you bend the arrow on some device, okay, this is just a tool to check straightness, but it has the same thing. There would be a meter here. Once again, here's another picture of a ram tester. You put a weight on it and then you roll the shaft and you can make them all very consistent because the meter has an arm on it that will show you the stiffness and you can get the whole set to hit the same stiffness by rotating the shaft and finding the exact same bending point on every arrow which is phenomenal it creates a consistent bending set of arrows in a very fast manner because every arrow is going to bend the same, you have improved your set of arrows, bear shaft, or even flesh, you could do that, okay? So there's an advantage to that, that you get to make the shafts themselves bend like this, with weight in the middle, this is key, with a weight in the middle, using that weight as your parameter, which I think is like a pound or two, I don't know, because I don't have one. Watch those videos, that way you'll understand it. So you have taken the test that you've performed on your arrow at 28 inches, is whatever the weight of that thing is, it bends your arrow a certain distance, and then you roll it until every single one of those arrows on the meter hits the same spot and makes completely consistent across the group. And that's one of the advantages, it's relatively efficient. Spine indexing tools are not cheap but it does create a more consistent set of arrows. The target defines the test. The test defines the outcome, okay? You're bending an arrow with a weight in the middle. The greatest thing is they are consistent. It's awesome. It's a fast way to get them consistent. I got that. But you're bending it with a weight in the middle. What does a bow do to an arrow? What does a bow do to an arrow? It pushes the arrow this direction. The correlation between hanging a weight from it and pushing it from the back of the, of the bow I don't know where the, how that is uh, 
just arbitrarily decide that that is the same mechanism to launch it with a push from the back and shove it forward. I just don't know how it even equates to hanging a weight off of it. So I've already said like 15 times, when you do this and you roll the spine and make sure that if it's, you know, say it's a 300 spine arrow and they all spine at 0 0.302 on your meter, then they're super consistent and you have made them more consistent and you've made a better set of arrows. I am not denying that. I'm just telling you that when you push from the back and shoot it forward, all kind of crazy stuff goes on. They will all bend the same direction most likely. They will all bend the same if you spine index them. However, that does not mean that they will fly. It just means they're consistent. You're about 80% there. And I'm not an 80% person. If you are and you're happy with 80%, that's enough. Keep moving. The reason why I advocate for bear shaft tuning, every single arrow in your quiver, and why we have bear shaft tuning kits is, how do you know that when you put it, I use the example of a 300 spine arrow and you have spine indexed them all to 302, just an arbitrary number I pulled out of the air, okay? Could be 295, whatever, okay, chill, easy. How do you know that bending rate by using a tool like this, it's not using a tool with the shaft supported at 28 inches and doing that, how do you know that's the right bending rate for your bow launch? How? Some people shoot 60 pounds, some people shoot 70, some people shoot 68, <laughs> 55. They shoot 55 pounds, they want to shoot a 300 spine and bump the point weight up. So they spine index to 0 0.302 as my example, but their bow's only push, pushing 50 pounds. Is that gonna be the same perfectly flying arrow for somebody shooting 58 or 60 or 65? It will not. It does create consistency across the set, but it does not show you somebody with a 27 inch draw at 60 pounds, somebody with a 30 inch draw at 60 pounds. The 30 inch arrow is much softer. Both of the arrows, let's assume, were spine indexed to 302. But one guy's got gorilla arms, he's out here at 31. And one person is pulling 27 inches and the arrow is much shorter. So it's much stiffer. Does that mean they're gonna launch the same? I would dare you to take a bow that's adjustable draw length and try it yourself. Shoot 27 inches arrows that are spine indexed at the same rate as a 31 inch arrow and see what happens. That at least has been my experience. So at Sirius, what I did, well, I came up with this concept like 2016 to have two different shafts, spines. Sirius can help you find these or I can. I don't know anybody else that offers test kits, so I think we're the only ones. And so if you're shooting like 65 at 28, which is me, I would, I would prescribe a 300 and a 250. We'd have the inserts in them. All the Ranch Ferry kits have 100 grain inserts. And then there's multiple field point weights across. They're 100, 125, 150, 175, and 200. If you wanted to shoot lower mass and have some velocity, then you just piddle around with the 100, 125, and maybe the 150. If you're open to whatever flies best, then you shoot all of them. But what happens when you use your own bow as a launcher and spine index this direction with it pushing it, which bends the arrow, each mass of field point will bend the arrow differently because it has to shove harder as you increase the field point weight. And a 300 at 150 grains may shoot bullets. And then you get up to 250s and you're messing around and you find out that 125 shoots great. And for some reason, the 200 grain point shoots great. I found that out. Big Mike showed me this, that 
there were different combinations that would come off and shoot perfect bear shaft. And then the combinations in between wouldn't. And I had multiple subscribers who have tried this and showed me the same thing. So I'm not trying to knock the uh, indexing thing. I'm just telling you, I can't square with bending it in the middle with a weight and making them consistent. I already said that you have improved your arrow set, but I can't square that that's the perfect bending rate or the perfect bending spot on each arrow on that set of arrows for your bow because the videos they, I'm not knocking the YouTube people they work really hard at this the general consensus in archery is as I said earlier that if you were to index them all and one person they don't say anything about draw weight they're just saying the arrows will be consistent right one person shooting 60 pounds one shooting 70 arrow links all over the place you're better off trying to bear shaft the thing and piddling around with the bear shaft to get it to fly perfect off the launcher that you shoot which is your bow in real conditions you shooting it launching it and going for it. So if you want to try bear shaft tuning, we have t bear shaft kits all over the place. If you want to bear shaft your own arrows, that's fine. I don't care what brand you get. We just happen to sell them because nobody thought of this. Seven yards, piece of paper. It's got to be level with you. You don't want to be shooting downhill because you can give you false readings and a little tail high and that you won't be able to necessarily work out. Not always, but you're just better off shooting. Shooting level, okay? Seven yards through paper. Put a target behind it, catch it. I've had a couple of people... <laughs> either miss the target and shoot through their garages or one guy shot he forgot he moved his target he shot he shot through the wall of his shop it skipped off the ground and hit his excavator hey troy wanted to show you a little mistake that i made <laughs> anyways i was paper tuning here i'll show you i'll have to turn this stupid thing around and uh doing a little uh, foc and uh I took my bag down from my hook and I was like, you know, my brain was doing uh, the math there and thinking I ought to shoot one more shot because I went from a 225 field point to a 200 field point. So, well, I shot through the wall of the shop. Kind of drove that down in there and it, uh, let's see, where's the camera? You can see it kind of flattened the tip out there. What it did is uh it actually went through my building here i'll show you <laughs> there's a good exit hole for foc and then it flew all the way across and it hit my excavator bucket over there and uh i'm sure that's what uh i'm sure that's what did that drove it into the uh the arrow a little bit there uh this was already a naked one anyway trying to do bear shaft tuning Anyways, thought you might enjoy that. So, peace. <laughs> that was freaking hilarious. So, just noodle that. And if you want a spine index and do all that stuff, I don't care. But I just have some, and I don't think they're unfounded concerns. Bending an arrow in this direction and then pushing it from the back with nine, with five million bow hunters doing it different and draw weight and draw length all over the place is not the same result goal at all. Spine indexing is to make them very consistent. It's a killer start for your bear shaft, by the way, to make them all the same. That's a, I totally approve of that. But I, you need to go to bear shaft and see if they fly. Because if you spine index the whole thing, it's super fast. And then you shoot it and it tears four inches, what do you do? What if that's the case? I don't index them, I just shoot bear shaft, mess around with the field points until I get the ones that fly the best and move on. Because I wanna use my launcher, me shooting it, my draw weight, my draw length, the arrows I wanna fly, micros, regular standards, mids, like those Sirius Apollos, what I shoot most of the time. I wanna shoot exactly what I'm shooting 
so that I know it's exactly the results with me shooting my bow and the best I can do with it. Hey, a little cutaway here. I do make a little gas money. I think that's very apparent. We tried to build the best aero systems and broadheads on the planet. If you want to uh, investigate this further and look into bear shaft tuning, knock tuning, and ordering arrows the right length, look at my ordering and arrow tuning playlist. I'll have it in the link or I'll have it in the description. Um, and then here's a picture of that on my YouTube channel. But there's a playlist there of three videos. The first one's how to order arrows the right length. The second one's how to actually knock tune fletched arrows. If you already have fleshed ones, you don't want to jump to bear shaft. At least you're going to improve the set and push from the back with your bow. And the third one is the process, the actual bear shaft tuning process in great detail. You can sit out with your phone and get out, get a paper tuning set, get a kit from Sirius and go through the whole thing. And I describe in great detail how to do that. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, my email is troy at ranchfairy.com. I'm also on Instagram on the message thing. Whatever, ranch fairy? Yeah. So that's my thought on the spine net X thing. Or ram testing, okay? Ram testing, I think. Whatever. I get the drift. Hanging away from the thing and bending it in the middle. How's that? I'm not bashing the people who do this. I've said it 50 times. I'm still going to get stupid comments. So just put them down below. Tell me I'm an idiot. Tell me I was being a jerk or whatever. I'm not doing that. I'm just laying out the idea that why would you even bother to do this when you have a perfectly useful spring with wheels that pushes the arrow from the back in exactly the same launch conditions you would do it when you're hunting. Just sit that in your head. You could take something that's nothing to do with pushing an arrow from the back with the launcher you're shooting and you shooting it. Or you can shoot it under the exact conditions that you will be shooting in the field with no fletchings on it and try to get the thing to fly straight. Okay, well, that's the Ranch Ferry. So if you want to check out the test kits, they're on Sirius Archery. The easiest thing to do is Google Ranch Ferry Store. I know you feel like you're being sold, but okay, that's fine. I don't really care. We make the best arrows I can find on the planet or I wouldn't have joined up with Sirius and they were willing to try the test kit concept with me. And I tried to talk to a bunch of manufacturers and all they did was look at me like, why would you do that? That's the dumbest thing. Listen, I've been doing this for a hundred years. It don't make any sense. That's what everybody else said. So at least they're out of the box and trying to help all the bow hunters in the world. Not me. We want you to have the best aero flight in the world. We offer the best shafts you can get, test kits, and some killer broadhead stuff. New toys coming out this fall. All right, have a great day. Let that sit in your head, and I hope you enjoy it. And you can subscribe if you want to, or you don't have to if you don't want to, because I don't care. I think you're free to do what you want. And uh, whatever, thumbs up. Bye.